Hi everyone, I think that we're live. Oh, flash of light. <laughs> All right, we are live. So happy Saturday, everybody in the Energized Executive Collective. Happy Saturday. Um, happy Saturday, happy Saturday, happy Saturday. <laughs> we do a little dance. So um, I went to a birthday party yesterday and we got these little uh, press-on tattoos and it matched my dress yesterday. <laughs> we got a little press-on tattoo today for our video. <laughs> I kind of liked it, didn't want to take it off. It makes me smile. So um, today I want to talk to you about the 80-20 or 90-10 rule for success when it comes to nutrition or you know, pretty much a lot of things in life, but we're going to focus in on nutrition, optimizing your nutrition, up, which optimizes your health, which optimizes your energy, your performance, your presence, your power, your confidence. It just, you know, nutrition just explodes your life in the best way when you really start to optimize it. So yeah, when you think about ultimate nutrition, something you need to know is the 80, 20 or 90, 10 rule for success, which I've written about in my book. So if you guys have a copy of the book, then this is my book, <laughs> first of all. Uh, it's called Fuel, Transform Your Body, Enhance Your Energy, Supercharge Your Life. And it was published years ago, 2017. So, or sorry, I wrote it in 2017. It was published in February, 2018. So just at the start of the new year in 2018. So I am working on a new edition, just so that you guys know, the new edition will be ready for 2023, crossing fingers. And so this is from the original book, which you can get on Amazon. You can also buy on Audible. And as an audiobook, which is my preference, I sat in a studio and read it out loud in the studio so you could have my voice reading this book that I wrote um, with all the emphasis that comes when you have an author actually reading their own words. So yeah, so there's uh, the audiobook is available on Audible, and uh, which is an Amazon product, and also iTunes worldwide. So in the book, um, if you have a copy of the book, I'd just like to refer you to page 66. Um, this section is called the 90-10 rule for success. The 90-10 rule for success. I'm going to actually read it to you. And if you're not near your ultimate nutrition goals and your optimized health, then you can change this one to be your 80-20 rule, okay? I'm like a 95-5 <laughs> rule um, because I am just a hundred, you know, I'm all in with, with this type of lifestyle. It's, it's so important. It's so incredible. And the benefits are just like, they just 10x your life. So 10x your life in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> all right. So the 90-10 rule for success on page 66 in my book Fueled, first edition. Okay. Okay. You've just taken in a lot of information and chances are that you might feel a bit overwhelmed. It is important to know that a healthy person and a healthy way of life includes eating some less healthy foods and drinking some less healthy beverages on occasion. You do not need to stop eating birthday cake on your birthday, a hot fudge ice cream sundae on a sizzling hot summer day, duck poutine when you visit Quebec City, and Art Mel's fish sandwich when you travel to Bermuda waffles and fried chicken when you visit the southern USA, and you might still want to enjoy a champagne toast or a glass of wine with your loved ones on occasion. No one is trying to take away your special little pleasures, whatever they may be. The key to being fueled is to take in maximum nourishment from amazing foods and the majority of the time so that your cells are flourishing and you are living a vibrant life. And then go ahead and make some less healthy choices some of the time, like three to five days out of the month. But to start gradually, maybe eat something from the not so highly recommended foods like muffins or cake only once a day and make 90% of everything else you eat plant-based or seafood or fueled. Here's a great way to look at it. Joshua Rosenthal, founder and director of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, promotes eating healthy foods most of the time, 90% of the time, and eating less healthy foods on occasion, about 10% of the time. That way, it's easy to follow and easy to fuel your body. A great way to start progressing from where you are to where you want to be is to go slowly. With simple replacements, for instance, changing eggs and sausages at breakfast to a smoothie and Ezekiel toast with almond butter. 
Changing lunch from pizza or pasta to a big bowl of roast veggies, brown rice, and salmon or locally caught fish. And dinner from meat and white potatoes or a cheesy casserole to something lighter and much more nutritious, like one of my spinach salads from the transform section of this book, topped off with roasted walnuts and hemp seeds. Eating sweet vegetables like carrots, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, beets, and onions also curbs sweet cravings, so focusing on those is highly recommended when you try to reduce your intake of carbs, cakes, brownies, ice cream, candy bars, etc. These vegetables are especially sweet when roasted. Keep in mind, fuel is not about deprivation. It's not about starvation. It's not about being on a diet where you think you're going to die and can't imagine how, you, how you're going to make it. In fact, it's the total opposite. It's about satisfaction, fulfillment, and feeling damn good. It's about boosting your body. You see, when you start eating more real plant-based foods and good seafood and healthy meats, you will naturally start to crowd out other foods you used to eat, meaning that you will have no room or appetite for them anymore because you have filled up on the good stuff. As a result, most people see a drastic reduction in their hunger pangs and cravings. They already feel full and physically and emotionally satisfied. The next section is called food as medicine, but I won't read that section. So this rule is one that I love to bring into coaching sessions with people. It's so important to know that if you would like your Baileys on ice cream, you know, on a Sunday, have your Baileys on ice cream on a Sunday. Um, when we put ourselves into states of deprivation, then we consciously, constantly think about, or unconsciously, constantly <laughs> think about the things that we're depriving ourselves of and from. So, it's so not highly recommended. What I do is inspire people to, in my sessions, I inspire, I will inspire you to discover what these amazing nutritious foods can do for your body when you're fueling your body with them, okay? So there's so many things it can do. It's really extraordinary from, you know, boosting your immune, your immune system to glowing skin to an incredible liver function to great blood and, and healthy cholesterol levels and excellent heart health and, you know, prevention of Alzheimer's um, and other degenerative brain diseases and things like that. So it's just incredible. Your performance, your, your everything, your libido, everything will go up, right? So it's one of those things where now you start to weigh in. Oh, okay. Do I really want the Mars bar? Um, you know, because you start to get an understanding that goes deep into the core of you of what the fueled foods bring to your body and what the not fueled foods don't bring to your body. And so then you get to make that decision and that's on you, right? But it's just when you're inspired that you are leaning in to all those fueled foods because you want those results, right? As high performance people, we want results. So, especially when they're also delicious and they just taste better than, than, you know, the Mars bar and other foods like that. So, something to really think about. Now, when I was growing up, my mom never went on a diet. She uh, never talked about calories. She never weighed her food. She was never on a program. Uh, she never talked about being overweight. She never... Basically, that whole world didn't, didn't exist in my home and I'm so grateful for that because... It just wasn't the perspective that she brought in when it came to food. Food was homemade, made from scratch, and uh, we had several meals a day. Um, and yeah, we just saw food being healthy and nourishing, and that was pretty much it. Um, and yeah, so that's really incredible. And then when I went to school or read the newspapers or read the magazines, that's when I learned about diets. Oh, pardon me. I have to plug that back in. That's where I learned about diets. That's where I learned about calories. That's where I learned about cheat days. So this idea of cheat days is one that really gets me because you know what, guys? If you have a cheat day, then that means your other days are no fun at all. So, you know, if you think about it, what would happen, what would it say about a marriage if your cheat day was on Saturday, okay? And especially if you were so excited for your cheat day, right? 
Um, can't wait to cheat. I'm going to cheat multiple times on Saturday, right? Like, it's, do you see how ridiculous it sounds? When you're having a cheat day that's <laughs> on your own food and you're eating a certain way all week and then you get a cheat on Saturday and that's exciting and it's just, it blew my mind. I'm like, these people are completely depriving themselves of pleasure, of good food, of nutrients, so many different aspects of like all that good stuff in life. It's unbelievable to me and I still hate the idea of a cheat day. I just, I hate the idea of a cheat day. There is no way that a cheat day is a good idea in any aspect of your life, right? Like, oh, I didn't smoke all week, now I get to smoke, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't drink all week, now I get to drink. Uh, so I just, you know, and you really think about it in terms of that marriage, right? If your marriage cheat day was Saturday, what would that say about your marriage? Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't talk about cheat days. I don't have cheat day. I've never had a cheat day in my life. Um, I believe in the 90-10 and 80-20 rule for success. What that says is that 90% of the time I'm eating nutritious, delicious, because it's not fueled if it's not delicious, okay? Delicious and nutritious, incredibly like nutrient giving, life giving, health optimizing, cell optimizing foods, 90% of the time, and then 10% of the time, it's my 10% or it's my 20%. And over the course of the year, like if you were to mark on a calendar the days that you had like your 10% or your 20%, then you look over the course of the year, it doesn't make a huge impact on your body. Your body um, thrives on what you do 90% of the time or 80% of the time. Sorry, it responds to. Because if you are putting in mac and cheese and processed sandwich meats and bread that's white and fluffy, 90 or 80% of the time, your body will respond to that. That's why you have diabetes. That's why you have cholesterol problems. That's why you're overweight. That's, there's so many, I mean, there's also other aspects when you eat, how you eat, uh, you know, so different things like that. But generally, your body responds to what you do 80 or 90% of the time it's not fussed about the 10% or the 20% of the time that you feel like I'm going to consciously have, I know it's not nutritious, but I really enjoy this type of food or drink. Now keep in mind, it's 10 to 20% of the time. If you are doing 40 or 50% of the time into the not nutritious category, you're going to have the effects of that. So I'm telling you the body responds to what you do 80 or 90% of the time. So. That gives you balance. It gives you balance. It gives you absolutely no guilt. So you don't like eat, uh, I don't even like Oreos. Um, let me think of what would I, <laughs> I don't really have any unhealthy habits, right? So um, I'll think of something for you guys, like an ice cream sundae or hot fudge sundae or something like that. You don't have guilt after. It's like, that was my 20%. There you go, right? Like. And you have an understanding that the majority of what you ate during that week, during that month, during that year was, you know, nutrient loaded, life giving fueled foods. So that's pretty much it. Um, it. There's no guilt associated to any kind of 10%, any kind of 20%. And I think it's funny because um, when I go out to eat, I'll post a picture below of when I did my, my 10%, I went to a barbecue and they had conventional meat. It was a barbecue, so it was like pulled beef brisket and hamburgers and all this conventional meat. I love beef brisket, but I haven't eaten any conventional meat this year yet until this barbecue. I piled my plate up high because I have a very high metabolism. Um, but I would not eat like this at night really ever on a regular basis, ever, ever, ever. But I was at an evening barbecue. This was a specialty and this is what I wanted. And so it was part of my 20%. And I think people are like, does she eat like that? But it's a part of my 20%, no guilt, no feeling upset, no, there isn't anything bad associated to it. So enjoy your 20%, enjoy your 10%, make sure it's the highest level of the 20% or 10% that you would fully, it's so delicious, you know, that it's, that it's your 20% or 10% for the whole life, for your entire life. You don't have to struggle with this kind of stuff. This is so simple when someone like me has been doing it for 20 years and I'm able to communicate it in a way that just in show by the way that I live. I'm not embarrassed that I had a cheesecake for breakfast. I'm not embarrassed that I had, you know, 
it's a 10%, it's a 5% for me actually, because I love my delicious fueled foods, but that's pretty much it. It's not hard, you don't have to cheat. You really don't have to cheat on your food. You don't have to s deprive yourself. It's gotta be delicious, it's gotta be nutritious. Um, 80 to 90% of the time, or if you're me, you're like 95% of the time. Um, and that's what your body responds to, and that's the results that you're gonna get. So if you have it flipped the other way around and you look at the fueled food pyramid and your 90% is like from the top of the less nourishing foods, you're going to have results in your body that reflect those choices and that choice. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think it's super simple and you never have to have a cheat day. I just call it when I am referring to it to somebody else as my 20% or my 10% or my 5% just so that they have an understanding of like, oh, this is a balance that I have, that I have. This is not, I'm not going to go home and cry about this. I'm not going to, it's not going to make an impact on my blood work. It's not going to make an impact on my body composition. It's 20, this 5% for me, right? So yeah, and all my food is delicious all week. Trust me. <laughs> all right, hope that was helpful. Have a great Saturday. Take care. Hey, so you made it to the end of this video. I have a lot more you're going to enjoy, so be sure to click to the next one, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell notification to make sure you always know what's happening. This is Agatha from Fueled, and see you in the next video.